Hello everyone! In this episode I will build a small bass sequencer for my Erika Synth's bassline DIY. After considering to just put together a small baby 8-like sequencer, I found this great project made by YouTuber Hagivo. So instead I decided to make an Arduino based sequencer, loosely based on that design. After doing some breadboarding, I adapted the design a bit to fit the baseline DIY by adding an accent and VCF control voltage outputs. And I also copied the slide circuit from the TB303. The software is made using the Arduino IDE, which is not my favorite software development environment, but uh, many people use it and it's easy to install and get to work. So I went with that in case someone wants to modify the code themselves. The code is pretty straightforward, but I had to do a couple of weird things to get the sequencer running while navigating the user interface, since I couldn't find a good real-time scheduler and I didn't want to write my own. So, after finishing the electronics design in KiCad, I made the first version of the PCB and assembled the first prototype. The prototype was used to develop the rest of the features in the software. After that I had to update the schematic diagram a bit and change a couple of things. So here's the finished design. Alright, if you would take a quick look at the schematic diagram, we see on the left side here we have the Arduino and the man machine interface parts with a rotor encoder. Uh, two buttons and the OLED display. The OLED display is connected to the SPI port of the Arduino. And if we move to the right side here, we have the digital to analog converter that is connected using I2C. And uh, that is used to generate pitch uh, information um, for the one volt per octave output here. And here we have the slide circuit uh, that is basically a copy of the Roland TB303 uh, port. And um, if we look at the gate output is simply an output buffer with a 1K resistor on the, on the output for current limiting. And uh, the VCF out and the accent out, they have low pass filters here. So uh, for, for the VCF out, the, this is used to generate an al analog output voltage from the PVM uh, signal from the Arduino. Uh, the same goes for accent out, but in the software I, I have not enabled this. So I'm only using accent out as a sort of digital output, one or zero. And uh, yep, yeah, here we have the reset in and the clock inputs. Those are basically connected as the GPIOs, GPIO inputs on, on the Arduino. And finally at the bottom we have the decoupling capacitors and reservoir capacitors, capacitors for the uh, power input. And as you can see, uh, this module is powered by all three voltages, 5 volt, 12 volt and minus 12 volt from the from the Eurorack uh, bus board. The new PCBs arrived after a couple of weeks and I could assemble them and also 3D print a prototype of the front panel using this awesome looking Aurora Green PLA filament from Ad North. Here's my 3D printing workstation. I have my Prusa Mini, which is the workhorse when it comes to FDM printing it's a fantastic little machine that produces near flawless prints. The other 3D printer is an Anycubic Photon, an SLA type of printer that uses UV light sensitive resin, which makes it possible to produce very small details. I use it a lot for scale modeling, uh, which is my other hobby. But now we are going to use it to 3D print a solid transparent lens that I can put in front of the OLED display. And first of all, I need to design the part in Fusion 360 and export it as an STL file. The slicing of the design is done in a separate software and the result is a manufacturing file that I can place on a USB stick and put in the 3D printer. Handling of uncured resin requires some safety measures since it can cause allergic reactions if it comes in contact with the skin. So wear gloves and safety glasses to protect yourself. I'm going to mix transparent resin with a couple of drops of black to get the lens glass with a tinted look. So I really have to mix it to make sure that there are no blobs of black resin. So after that I insert the tray with the resin into the printer. 
close the lid and we are ready to start printing. The printing process works like this. The resin is exposed with UV light projected through an LCD screen onto the build plate. The tray with the resin has a transparent bottom with a special non-stick plastic film. So when the build plate is lifted, the solid resin layer sticks to the build plate. After that, the build plate is lowered onto the bottom of the tray again and the whole cycle is repeated. The part is slowly built up like this, layer by layer. After the print has finished, next step is to wash the parts to remove the excess resin. I have a special cleaning station for this, which makes the job a little bit easier. After this cleaning cycle is completed, it's time to pry loose the parts from the build plate. The resin is still a bit soft, so be careful. After giving them a final rinse in pure alcohol, I need to expose them to some more UV light to make the final curing of the parts. Okay, so this is what the parts look like after curing. And as you can see, the surfaces are too rough to be possible to use as a lens at this point. So what we are going to do is to sand down the rough surfaces using a fine sanding paper. The parts are perfectly safe to handle when they are cured, but the resin dust is quite unhealthy to inhale. So we will work with the wet sanding paper and make sure that we clean up the working area afterwards. Okay, this is the result of the sanding and I know what you're thinking. This is going in the totally wrong direction. But please bear with me, it's going to be alright in the end. The next step is to unify the surface a bit by adding a layer of transparent gloss varnish on both sides. After curing for 24 hours, I use some polishing compound to get a nice sheen and recover the transparency of the lens. Here's the final result after attaching the lens to the 3D printed panel. But I have also made a PCB panel for this module, so I make a second lens that I will use for that. To glue the lens to the panel, I recommend using water-based scale model glue or two-component epoxy glue. Super glue is not recommended because it can easily haze the lens during the curing process. Last step is to assemble everything into a finished module. Be careful not to scratch the lens while you're putting everything together. In the next episode I will showcase the module and we will have a closer look at the software and how it works. Thank you for watching, take care and I'll see you soon again.